City Coffee. Where Megan's and me. Jess. The has. fundamentals of roasting before we roast, before we even touch her really nice machine, and uh, <laughs> so all the safety precautions that that you need to teach us. <laughs> yes, welcome back to Black City Coffee. This <laughs> vlog, I'm gonna teach these guys how to roast Vietnam because <laughs> I feel it's the easiest one out of the bunch that we have. That's super popular too. And I have a lot of family and friends waiting on coffee as well. So um, we're going to break this up I think into maybe two or three videos. The first video is going to be pretty simple. We're just talking about setup and safety which is um, kind of the most important. You can't do uh, roasting correctly and in the long term if you're not safe um, and it's a big deal. So. Uh, the first thing that I will talk about is gathering materials. So I always kind of forget, like I'll be like running back and forth and stuff because I get so excited I just want to rush to the roaster but um, it helps when I write everything down and I'm actually teaching so I teach you guys the right way to do it. So the first thing is um, it's one box f uh, per coffee of roasted coffee and we always keep roasted coffee containers separate from green coffee containers and the reason is because green coffee harbors a lot of allergens and other foreign materials and it's not sanitary in a way because um, they're coming from other countries right so they haven't been roasted and put through um, so much heat where all of that is basically killed and then bagged sanitarily so we keep those containers always always separate okay so you have one box per roasted coffee and you always find those upstairs where um, where all the coffees are bagged. Mm -hmm. Those are those square boxes. Oh. Okay. You can use um, paper and pen and sticky to label which roasted coffees if you're roasting different coffees. But since we're only doing Vietnam, you know, we don't really need to do that. Okay. Bring the laptop and the power cord the Sur Surface Pro that we use mm -hmm. and don't bring the um, the keyboard you don't need that so we always bring the power cord because uh, you don't want to have your uh, roast path of your software shut down in the middle of your roast that happened to me <laughs> oh no <laughs> so um, and then so that's good so we got everything that we need from upstairs uh, downstairs so we're getting ready and you can um, put that all um, at the roaster, like put put the laptop on the laptop holder and set that up and uh, uh, connect the USB. Oh yeah, right there. Connect USB. And that USB allows your roaster to talk to roast path. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it would be wise to also boot up roast path before you start roasting. Roast path is a very new software so they're always updating it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there will be an update and you haven't updated your own software and then it won't work. Oh no. So there, there were times where I was caught like I couldn't roast with Rose Path. I could roast by my own knowledge and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I always like to see um, the bean temp, um, um, uh, the roast curve and stuff like that so I could be more consistent. Mm -hmm. uh, roast software is just enabling one to be more consistent with their products otherwise you could definitely roast without it mm -hmm. but there would probably be a lot more variance in your product <clears throat> that's what we did yeah we yeah that's what we did right <laughs> so uh okay so there you connect everything um everything's kind of plugged in don't turn anything on yet mm -hmm. okay um okay next you come back into the green area green area meaning where all the green beans are that back corner. Right. And um, I advise always wearing gloves and a mask when you um, take out when you take out the green and put it into the green pitcher for measuring. Mm. 
So you want to do that because it's very dusty and it could be kind of volatile when you open a bag, especially if it's a new bag, like you have a new bag of Vietnam. Um, and just it's very like irritating. Mm. Yeah, I, I tried it once without it and it's, it's not fun. <laughs> so I was like, does it really affect me? Uh, okay, so you'll pre-measure a thousand grams, mm -hmm. try to be exact, mm -hmm. okay? Um, with the scale that's over there and with the, exactly that green picture. We mm -hmm. don't use anything else. Um, that way it's green, touching green all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've got your thousand grams, cool. If you're doing multiple batches um, and you're only um, you're only roasting that one coffee for you guys, it's um, it's okay to just come back inside and just remeasure. Like say when you drop the coffee and it's cooling down, you can just come back in and do that. Oh, okay. Um, or you can just pre-measure many batches of a thousand grams to make mm -hmm. your life easier. Place them. Place them in a ziploc, mm -hmm. but just know. That's just going to be for green. Okay. Okay. So that's that. That's gathering your materials. Now, now we get into safety and setup. So this is where we take the propane from outside, and we come in into the into the um, um, where the roast area is, and then hook it up. So <clears throat> you have to make sure this is really important, or else it'll be kind of annoying. Where you need to make sure the fitting, the regulator fitting is straight and it's it's on pretty tight. So what I need, what I typically do is I turn it, turn it to as much as I can, that black valve, and then I'll even take the the pipe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you call that? Um, hose. The, yeah, the hose. The hose, and I and I work that hose up, tighten again, work it up, tighten again. So I want to make sure that that fitting is like tight. Uh -huh. And the reason that is is because if it's not tight enough, <clears throat> the regulator doesn't read uh, the gas coming through, the propane coming through. And so it'll basically shut off. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to regulate how much propane is coming through the line. Mm -hmm. So we want to down regulate it to uh, 0.5, right? So it's quite a bit. So okay. if it's not tight enough, your regulator will basically fail, it's a fail safe, and you won't be able to roast. Mm. That's a false number. It's a, it's a fail safe. Okay. Right. So, <clears throat> otherwise, if you, if, if you didn't have the regulator, you'd blow so much propane through the line, they would actually break the machine. Um. <clears throat> okay. So make sure it's very tight, and then um, check all the connections. So there's a lot of things going on with the roaster. There's um, all the, um, make sure everything's off for one thing, like the, um, the on button mm -hmm. or switch to the roaster is off. It wasn't accidentally flipped forward or anything like that. Everything is off. Everything looks safe. Everything doesn't look um, dirty. My fire didn't, sorry. <laughs> 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 everything doesn't, everything doesn't um, look out of place. Uh -huh. And since I haven't roasted in a long time, you need to check all of the the surfaces that coffee would touch, and, and make sure, it. yeah, clean it, dust it off a little bit. Mm -hmm. Make sure that the charge door is fully closed. Mm -hmm. One time I charged, and the charge door was half open. Oh, so <laughs> so stuff got inside. Yeah. Oh shit. So it's basically like charging too early. Oh. So make sure that's closed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, make sure that the door where the coffee drops out is also closed. Yeah. I didn't leave it open or something so that when you, you drop coffee, through. it just goes it doesn't, through. <laughs> yeah, it just ends up on the floor, right? So all check all these things that coffee is touching. Mm -hmm. And then um, lastly, uh, check the, the chaff can. So there's a latch where the, the chaff thing. is. Yeah, that big old. And then that's all that's it's that's called a stuff. cyclone. Yeah. Uh, that's where all the chaff is collected. Um, open that up. I'm pretty sure I haven't cleaned it and since I last roasted. And, and just vacuum it. Okay. And you always vacuum before you've turned the roaster on, not after. Mm. Because if you do after, um, there could be some embers 
and fire embers fire. in it. Yeah, and your vacuum will catch on fire and melt your vacuum. Oh, shit. Okay? <clears throat> so always when it's cold. Lastly, open. I have a loosely, um, a loose bolt mm -hmm. where the door is to where the burners are. Mm -hmm. Open that up. There's a tray underneath. And you should see um, the last roast collection of super burnt chaff or chaff that got through or anything that got through the drum. You need to take that out, assess it, like is it a lot, is it a little, just a mental note what, what's going on there, and then throw that away. Mm -hmm. And then place the tray back inside, and then put the door back and loose leaf and put that bolt back. Is a mental note to kind of like reflect on how you were roasting? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you, well, it's kind of like a mental note to be like, is my drum separating separating from uh, its fitting? Like over time, it's a machine, things get loose. Okay. You know, so if you're getting a lot of stuff falling through, mm -hmm. there, there's an adjustment that can be made between the, do the, the drum and the rest of the machine or something. I've never done it yet, but... Just take a look. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if there's a lot, that's an issue. If there's a little, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, next is, oh, dust, yeah, dust, <laughs> okay, cool, so everything's good, right, everything looks all good and everything, so now we plug in the main power, um, and that's the wall, and that's the extension cord that's attached to the adapter. The adapter is that little box. Okay, the box now you can uh, turn the power on on the box. Okay, cool. That lights up. Then you turn on the power to the roaster. And you're going to see it kind of working its numbers. Wait for it to boot up um, until you see a solid number in the PID. The PID is just that number where you look at the um, the overall temperature of the, of the roaster. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then um, now you open the gas line. So you open the gas line all the way on the propane tank. You don't need to open it all the way, just like one, two, that's pretty good. That's enough. And then you hit ignition on the roaster. It's going to click and you immediately turn the gas up to 2.2 um, .2 kPa. That's full power, basically. The needle will move up. Mm -hmm. And you know that you're having gas through the line there. Oh wait, is it backwards? Oh, reverse that, I think. I think it's I think it's turn the blue valve gas up first and you'll see the needle move up mm -hmm. and then you hit ignition. Okay. And then you'll hear that Yeah. Cool. And that's yeah, your your fire. And then always as as a good practice is to go look through the door of the door burner where you see the fire and make sure all your your um, burners, are, burners are, are lit okay and you want to look for a nice blue flame mm -hmm. nice blue flame means that you have a lot of fuel in your propane tank if you're seeing a lot more orange in your flame that means you're running low on fuel which then you can use my little tool to kind of weigh it and see how much fuel is in that in that line mm -hmm. I mean in that tank mm -hmm. okay yeah, you never want to be caught with like a little bit of fuel, mm -hmm. and then now you just wasted this batch because maybe you, you got your fuel Can't cut off. Shit. Okay. <clears throat>